Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at the cooling coils in a HVAC system to see what they do, how they work, and how to ensure they are operating efficiently. And towards the end of the video, we're going to look at some calculations for these also. So cooling coils are a really common uh, component in HVAC systems. And they usually come in two forms. Uh, the first one being they are refrigerant. They are fed uh, refrigerant directly from an AC unit as you can see here so we've got the uh, AC unit outside and this is just piped straight uh, to the DX unit within uh, the AHU or the uh, fan coil unit. Now you can always tell if the cooling coil uh, is a refrigerant based and that's because obviously it's got the expansion valves here and they're usually uh, directly outside the coil uh, and then you've also got the uh, this is this view, photo here is from the inside of this coil and you can see that splitting away there and feeding off uh, into multiple uh, smaller tubes and off into the cooling coil. Now this type of uh, cooling coil is controlled um, by there's a capillary tube just inside underneath this lagging here and that tube rides up and then comes through this, uh, through the, this tube here and down onto the diaphragm of the expansion valve. So. Uh, that controls the refrigerant through the, uh, the meter device there. If you haven't already done so, I'd highly recommend you check out our chiller expansion video uh, where we cover this uh, exact type of expansion valve. And you should see a link just above you now. Now the other form of cooling coil you're going to get is the chilled water cooling coil. Uh, and this is usually from an econom economical point of view. Um, whereas if you've got multiple AHUs or fan coil units or uh, you know a lot of uh, cooling demand on the building then it's probably going to be more economical to have it from a centralized system rather than uh, a localized uh, direct expansion unit so this setup is more common in uh, very large buildings whereas this setup uh, is much more common in, in places like shops or, uh, or, or, or small sites and buildings so if the cooling coil is fed uh, by chilled water then it's going to look something uh, a bit like this so the chilled water flows in through the bottom and flows through these passages here until it makes its way to the top and then exits back to the chiller. And the cooling capacity for these uh, types of cooling coil, uh, they're just controlled by usually a motorized valve or it could be manual. Uh, but certainly if you've got a BMS, then uh, it'll be from a motorized valve. And that just restricts some of the flow going into it to meet the set point, uh, whichever you've got for your flow temperature or off coil temperature. Now there's some steps you can take to make sure that your cooling coil is uh, operating as uh, efficiently as possible. And the first step is to ensure that the, uh, the fins are uh, cleaned regularly. So all these uh, little sheets of metal that run in between all the tubes, uh, they're known as the fins. And because the warm air that comes in from the outside uh, usually condenses on the cooling coils. Uh, the surface of these can often be very moist and any uh, dirt or dust that has not been captured by the filters uh, will usually end up sticking to this and all that dirt it, it really just adds a layer of insulation and stops the heat transfer or the thermal energy transfer um, out of these these tubes and into the fins. So the fins are there uh, so the, the chilled water is passing through these tubes and the fins just extract some of that, that cold thermal energy out of there, um, pulling it out into the, the airflow so the air passes through the gaps in between and uh, the fins just extract some of that thermal energy out and spread it across giving it more chance for the air to take it away. So the more dust that covers these fins uh, the less chance the air has got to actually come in contact with the cold surface of the fin and take some of that um, thermal energy away or transfer its thermal energy uh, back into the chilled water. Another very common issue uh, with cooling coils is that the fins are very delicate so uh, any knock, uh, you know, if you're in there doing maintenance or anything um, there's a high chance you're going to knock these and that is going to damage the fins, like you can see in the, the photo just here. So what's happened here is someone's obviously uh, knocked into this cooling coil and that's actually closed the fins, so it's pushed them shut, 
so no air can actually pass through there and that means that no heat transfer will occur um, through this because obviously the, the air would normally pass through these gaps in between the fins but here it's been sealed so you need to be very careful when working around these if you have got some damaged fins then it's very easy to repair um, you can actually buy one of these um, condenser fin combs and they look a bit like this and they're, they're very cheap they're, they're around ten pounds ten dollars to buy um, and you just you, you find the right size uh, fin fittings that you've got and then you just put it in like a comb and you push against that uh, up and down a few times and that will actually straighten out all the fins uh, back to new. Now I've left some links in the description uh, just for where you can buy these from. They're a very useful tool. I really uh, recommend any uh, HVAC engineer should have one of these. So if you just scroll down and hit the uh, show more button and you can find those links below. Another important step for your cooling coils uh, if they are chilled water fed then you should check that the uh, cooling coils in your building uh, are being fed chilled water and the water should be entering through the bottom and then rising up through that going against gravity which gives it more chance to uh, turbulate or become turbulent in there and give up some of that thermal energy um, and then make its way out of the top. If it's been piped incorrectly so the chilled water is entering through the top and leaving through the bottom, uh, if you were to pipe it around the other way, the correct way, then you're probably going to see about five anywhere between five and fifteen percent increase in uh, effectiveness from that but if you do find one on your site please first check with your manufacturer to make sure that it has been fully designed for that operation another check you should uh, have a look at on your site is if the uh, the inlet for the chilled water should always be on the right hand side the furthest part away from the direction of flow so if your cooling coil is the other way around uh, then it's actually back to front so if the uh, if the inlet is on the face closest to the direction of airflow, uh, then this has been installed incorrectly also. Unless again, the manufacturer has specifically designed it for that purpose. So please check with them. Okay, so let's have a look at some, uh, some basic cooling coil calculations. So here we've got some sort of cooling device being uh, either a fan cool unit or an AHU, essentially performing the same task, but on a larger scale for an AHU. And we know that this fan here is pulling in air at a, a volume flow rate of two meters cubed per second. Now we've got a temperature probe here and we can measure that that air coming in is coming in at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. And from the BMS or from maybe a, a humidity sensor, we can tell that the air coming in has a relative humidity of 70%. And with these two values here, that means we can look up um, all the, these other values here, such as the specific volume, the enthalpy, and also the specific humidity. And you'll have to look these up in the air properties tables. Uh, you can just Google these, uh, it's very quick and easy to do, or just find an online air properties calculator. Now the supply air that's coming out of the fan cool unit or the AHU, uh, we're measuring it here, and we know that that air is coming out at 15 degrees Celsius with a rel relative humidity of 100%. And from those two values, we can then look up uh, the enthalpy and also the specific humidity for this airflow also. So obviously that air has cooled down from 30 degrees Celsius down to 15 degrees Celsius. Uh, and that's because the cooling coil here uh, is an operation. So uh, flowing through this cooling coil is the chilled water. And that is flowing at a rate of 4.67 kilograms per second. The water coming in is at six degrees Celsius and, uh, and from that we can look up uh, and tell that the specific heat capacity is at 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin uh, but we don't know yet what the uh, temperature out is going to be on that coil but we can calculate that also now this air uh, is also condensing because it's coming in very warm and leaving very cool um, at a hundred percent relative humidity so that uh, the moisture in that air is condensing on this cooling coil and that is then flowing uh, away out to drain and we know that that water is going to be uh, at a temperature uh, of this out here so that's going to be at 15 degrees Celsius and, uh, and we can look that up the enthalpy for that 
which will be, uh, you'll have the finies in the saturated steam tables and uh, you'll see that there is going to be at 63 kilojoules per kilogram. And we can also calculate um, how much uh, water is actually flowing out of there from this air that's coming in. So of this air that's coming in, there's obviously two parts to that. There is air that's coming in and then there's also moisture which is in the air. So we can calculate how much just pure air is in there, so that, that it's called the, the dry dry air and the, the mass flow rate of that coming in, the amount of uh, flow rate uh, of air coming in uh, without any moisture, that is the uh, m dot. The, the dot just represents uh, a rate of flow, uh, A represents the, the air. So it's the, um, the volume flow rate, as you can see up here, divided by the specific volume also of that air coming in. And obviously that is that uh, number there is specific to the air at these conditions. So when we drop these numbers in, which are just coming from up here, uh, this comes out at 2.22 kilograms per second of, of air, dry air coming into this cooling unit. I also mentioned that there is condensate water, and that's water that's being extracted from this warm air um, and is being discharged down to drain. So we can calculate the flow rate of that as well. So um, so the condensate mass flow rate, uh, that's the water, so it's m dot and the w represents just water. And uh, we can use this formula here, which is the uh, mass flow rate, of the, or flow rate of the air, which we just calculated, um, multiplied by the difference uh, in the specific humidity. And that gives us 0.022 kilograms per second, and that's of water flowing out of this. So from all this, we can then calculate the cooling load, uh, and that's represented by the Q. And that formula is just a, a summary of the mass flow rate of the air multiplied by the uh, difference in enthalpy across these two air streams, uh, in addition to uh, the multiplication of the mass flow rate of the water multiplied by the enthalpy of the uh, condensate water also. And you can see I've color coded these numbers as well, so you should be able to just trace these out if you were to get stuck trying to work this out yourself. So when we drop these numbers in, uh, you should see that this comes out at 78.5 kilojoules per second, which is also obviously uh, 78.5 kilowatts. So that means that this cooling coil is extracting 78.5 kilowatts of thermal energy from this airstream. And once we know that, we can then uh, calculate what the water off temperature is going to be so that the water, the chilled water that's leaving this cooling coil, what temperature that's going to be at. So the temperature out, the T out, uh, is equal to temperature in plus the cooling load divided by the mass flow rate of this water that's passing through um, and that multiplied against the specific heat capacity. Again, all these figures are color coded, so you should be able to just um, find these and plot them in if you've got an example yourself to work out. So when we drop these figures in, uh, you should see that the temperature uh, of the T out is equal to 10 degrees Celsius. So that water is coming in at 6 degrees Celsius and leaving at 10 degrees Celsius, going back to the chiller. Okay, that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and feel free to share the video uh, with anyone you think it might help also. Once again, thanks for watching.